Oh, panelists is three. Is that including us? Yeah, okay, yeah. good. All right. Um, okay. Today, uh, small wooden wrecks in Minnesota's lakes. This does not include anything in the rivers that we've done because we haven't found a small wreck in a river yet, uh, just larger ones, and that's next week. So um, these are just, just like we've been talking about the last few weeks uh, with these uh, talks. Um, okay, firstly, this is uh, MHM. We've seen this before for you guys that have joined us before. Uh, Chris and I are the archaeologists, underwater archaeologists, and our volunteers. And then we've got our small board of trustees, uh, Ann Hoig, Chris is our colleague's wife, who uh, works as dive master sometime and crew. Um, Betty, who's from Ohio and does some uh, editing for us. And then we've got our, our mascots. I'm tell Tom about Betty. You're Oh yeah, that's right. With Essex, with Tom, hey Tom, you're here. Uh, Betty's grandfather was on the USS Essex yeah, in Toledo. Okay, um, again, mowing the lawn. That's how we we okay. find our our uh, so basically we do anomalies. We do the edges of the uh, lake and then uh, go either north, south, east, west, or depending on uh, which direction the wind and the waves are going, we'll try to head into them as much as possible rather than going across them. Yeah, because uh, it. Wavy, wavy, wavy sonar is not good. Yeah. Uh, so the lakes that we are talking about today with a small craft are the Lake Minnetonka, Prior Lake, Lake Pulaski, where I learned to swim. I grew up in Wright County. Lake Johanna, Medicine Lake, and that's it. So here's the first ones, flat bottom rowboat wrecks. Um, we find flat bottom wrecks a lot. Um, obviously, yeah. there's a bunch here. Um, in the numbers up here, 21 SC 116. SC is Scott County, so that's a site in Scott County, meaning Prior Lake. RA, Ramsey County, that means in Lake Johanna. HE, Hennepin County, that's either Lake Minnetonka or Medicine Lake. And in this case, um, it's all. Yeah, this is a, the, on the right side, lower, that's Medicine Lake. Left side is uh, Lake Minnetonka. So this one's really interesting, yeah, the upper, I think. The upper left is yeah. a, a rather old old timer, and uh, it's in the uh, upper Lake Prior, prior Lake, which uh, mm -hmm. means the visibility is awful. pretty awful. <laughs> so we can only you know show you really close-ups of it. But it's yeah, you have never gotten a full picture yeah. of the whole wreck because you can't see it. Yeah. What I find interesting is you look at these these uh, quarters, the port and starboard quarters, they've got a, a, a piece of log or branch that still has bark on it, or at least used to really have bark on it when they built it. It's rough. There's no, it's not smoothed out at all. It's very, the whole thing is rough. There's a lot of erosion on that one quarter, but um, this one bit, it's just got a round piece of branch. And we have found that in one other boat that we've documented at the Minnesota Historical Society. And as far as we know, it's the oldest planked boat in Minnesota. Um, and it's it's from 1858, yeah. 1857. It literally looks like they used some crooked tree branches to, for, to, to make, make frames. Frames and floors. Yeah. yeah. And so same kind of thing. Um, the one over on the right with Lake Johanna, again, not great visibility. So only mm. bits and pieces. No not a whole lot left of that yeah. one, mostly buried, just basically the transom and a bit of the stem, stem post. So we can't even tell you if that's a thwart ship or longitudinally planked, which is something we really like to know because it does help us figure these things out. Yeah, it was a donut. Yeah, and this one is a, it is a, a uh, wine low, glass stern, but lower left ish, yeah. wine glass stern ish, because um, we've got a bunch of those and that's kind of a, a whole, it's its own uh, category. And the one from Lake, from Medicine Lake is a great little boat. You see this, this white painted boat there, the one that's not sunk. That is from Medicine Lake. It, the wreck looks like that, um, basically. And it's a, it's a fisherman's friend, basically, is what we call them. Uh, if, we, if we don't know if something's longitudinally planked, though, we can't call it a fisherman's friend because that's a criteria for being a fisherman's friend. And the name fisherman's friend came from the makers of the boats, not us. We did not make it up. So. A thwart, a thwart ship's planked, it means that it's, fisherman's right, if friend. we don't, okay. and I said if we don't know, right, right. Uh, if it's okay. longitudinally planked, it's right. not fisherman's friend, it's just flat bottom. That's right. what I said, yeah. Okay. So here are fisherman's friends um, that we were yeah. just talking about, and a picture in the middle. The fisherman's friend there is from a uh, Ramele boat company. Um, 
this folded brochure, Ramele bought more boat works on Lake Minnetonka, but Ramele originated at White Bear Lake, a very famous boat company been around for, was around for, for several decades. But that's what it, the Thorchips ships planked, flat bottom, looks very simple. I mean, some of these are made probably by guys you know, in their, in their, in their uh, garage. It's you know? kind of interesting about the one on the uh, upper left there. Uh, it's sitting on a rock pile. And I, I guess what they used to do back in the day when, when homeowners, lakeshore owners wanted to make a beach, They'd uh, take an old boat, fill it with rocks from the area that they wanted to make a beach and just uh, tow the boat out, tip the boat over so they could dump the rocks and then bring it back and repeat the process. Uh, however, on this case, I think what happened is that not all the rocks uh, exited the boat in time and it sank. Yeah, because the boat didn't seem it was that horrible. It could have st still used it. So. Yeah. Um, but they're easier to build. These are easy to build if you've got any kind of skills. Um, so they're flat bottom, squared off. There's nothing fancy about these boats. Um, we have documented two of them in museums, one at the uh, Pioneer Museum in Long Lake. It's, oh, it's Western Hennepin History Center now, West Hennepin History Center now. They used to be the Pioneer Museum in Long Lake. They've got one that we've uh, 3D scanned and documented. And the other um, belongs to the uh, Museum of Lake Minnetonka. That's the folks that run the street, street, streetcar boat uh, Minnehaha that Chris and I used to work for when it was part of the Minnesota Transportation Museum. We used to run the steamboat for, the, for MTM. Uh, and they've got one that was uh, donated by a person, I, they they took it off the bottom basically, oh. <laughs> and so yeah. um, which isn't good. Um, no, that's the other wreck. This one, where did this one come from? Where did we get this one? I don't know. The, where, the fisherman's friend yeah. is that from Cliff? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, where that they came the, off the bottom. The, those, yeah, those, it came yeah. off the bottom of the lake, which is bad because it was it should have. It's one of those we should have found, and it was conserved. Not that great, but anyway, we three we three D scan that too. Uh, at, the least other ones, at least it's not a pile of dust in here. Right, right. So, and the other ones are again. You see, longitudinally planked. That you see this one down here. That's from Maxwell, or that's from Harrison's Bay. That is a is a criteria for fishermen's friends. And now you might ask at this point too, what's small wooden wreck? Small is in this case we're considering under twenty feet. Uh, the talk that we're giving next week on large wooden wrecks are 20 feet and over, obviously. So anything you see here is under 20 feet. Um, this is kind of neat for us because wonderful. because Lake Pulaski isn't overrun with zebra mussels. Yeah, you can so actually it, see it's things. very nice, and uh, this is an absolutely pristine rowboat wreck. Probably home built. You see, they tried. They made it. They made a seat in the back, but it's kind of rough. It's not one of those really nice hewn, polished up decorate decorative back seats and it's just it's a sharp the sharp pointy bow to it it's just that that rake is really cool that's that's difficult that's hard to build something that sturdy and, it's, and sturdy so it's, this was some talent if this was a home build might have not been a home build but we don't know what brand of course because this is yeah. it's sunk in the 1910s so but very old what and wonderful so. and very cold this is 50 feet of water so look at that visibility in 50 feet i mean that's just fantastic. Is pretty good generally for visibility pretty clear it sometimes is dark but it's clear mm -hmm. so if you just use lots of lights you're fine it's just yeah. like a night dive then. yeah oh this one just last year we yeah, uh, documented we were, this one when we went out early in the uh shortly after i saw on the top here yeah on the top there we went out early after i saw to do some scanning along the shoreline because figured the weeds wouldn't be that uh, intense. Yeah, and they weren't, there. they were still pretty bad, but well, we found the wreck. It was anyway. enough to see this. Yeah, and um, it was flipped over. We figured it's, it's a duck boat. We, we're calling it a scow wreck because it's used, we wouldn't call something a duck boat unless it's really a duck boat. And we, this is just a small wooden boat that we found on the bottom that's got scow in. So it's definitely a scow. Yeah. Um, can't and say anything about the bits. One side of it's uh, detached and a little bit separate from the rest. Yeah, this has been there a long time. This is like sunk in the 1910s or earlier, 1890s probably. The bottom wreck here, the flat bottom rowboat wreck, this is from Christmas Lake. Uh, we just uh, discovered this one this uh, past June. We just did the work in Christmas Lake this year. And wonderful slat, but built with slats. Um, very nicely built boat, in bad shape, pretty old. We can't say a whole lot about it because it is fragmentary. And we have to, we'd have to take off the silt to really see a whole lot. And that wasn't in our, in our, one of our mission or goals for that project. So she's just, is the way she is. The Gideon Bay, that's one of the first that's, wrecks we identified in Lake Minnetonka. Yeah. One of the first, not quite the first, but. Um, Not very far from where we uh, keep our boat, too, so yeah. it's just a nice short The dock shot. that we stay at. 
Um, and she's a stir. Initially, when we found her, we didn't realize she was a wine glass stern. Yeah. But she gets covered and uncovered a lot. Yeah. I, it's weird how much I, the silt moves around there. I think because that area has kind of become a party place for mm. speedboats and. Uh, yeah, it's becoming the cruiser's yeah. cove of Gideon Bay. Or of Lake Minnetonka. Yeah. Or, relocated to Gideon Bay. Yeah. But so. Uh, yeah, so it's probably a lot of prop wash that uh, dug out the stern a little bit around the outside. And we realized after we documented her rudimentarily that she is. A, a, a wine glass stern wreck because our, our volunteer Kelly redove the wreck on his own uh, a couple it was a two or three years after we found her he went back to look at her and found that she was a wine glass stern so that's kind of neat and here's pictures of these boats are from Chapman's Hotel which is on Upper Lake uh, Lake Minnetonka but they that a wine glass stern is a wine glass stern and then anything that goes in, in it you know determines if you've got seats and all that stuff but the actual the basic plan of a wine glass stern uh, it's the same these are obviously uh full these are lap strake or their or clinker whatever you want to call that uh those two choices uh or they're not sometimes a wine glass stern can be smooth hull but usually we find them more clinker yeah um and the second the bottom that's, one is uh, interesting yeah that's our uh, first sailboat yeah and our only yeah. wooden sailboat that we found yeah. in lake minnetonka um mm -hmm. the uh, sonar image you see in the middle right there um there's actually less exposed than what the sonar image indicated. Now you can see it's mostly buried. Yeah. You know. uh, the thing that was sticking out the most was the uh, stem post and the transom and uh, a little bit of the mast. And we're lucky that it's, it's mast is really forward. Um, it, it's not, and it, but it's sloop rigged, but it's really forward. So which is interesting. So it's not a schooner, no double, no, no two masts. Um, um, you can almost call it a cat boat, really. It's, it's, if it's forward enough, I it can think, be called yeah, a cat I think, boat. I think it, the mast has to be practically right up against the stem. So, post, eh, so. cat boat maybe, but we can't really call it a cat boat because of that placement isn't quite maybe far enough ahead of the or forward. So we're calling it this wooden sloop. But what's interesting is we found this with our old sonar. Both sonar pictures here are our old sonar. We've got a newer sonar that's much better. Um, and when we sonar this area, it still, it, I, the old sonar picked it up just as well as the new sonar for, for something that's mostly buried. It's interesting because we don't have a sub bottom profiler attached to this thing. We just have sonar. So to see a little bit below the surface, I mean, we, we would never find her if that, if it, that little it bit extra didn't little, do it. Little bits that were all. So we're lucky with that one. Mostly we'd like, someday we might uncover her. That's within our, our phase one permit. So we can maybe do that. Our licenses uh, cover that. Okay, another, uh, another wine, wine glass stern yeah. with a seat. No, well, poor yeah. little boat. Yeah, um, the upper one there, <laughs> yeah. uh, that one, uh, Kelly, I think, dove on it fairly. Yeah, Kelly found it. Yeah, he, 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 other he, divers have seen it yeah, too. Yeah, he, he found it initially, and we were able to locate it on our old sonar. And this picture is a new sonar picture. You can see that the bow is, is sticking out very, yeah. very obviously, but the rest of it isn't because it it's just it's and nearly it, getting destroyed. Yeah, Kelly said the yeah. since. When we initially found it, uh, the stern is pretty much totally gone. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fallen down. The seat is not uh, yeah, no longer standing up. Pieces. So it's good we're documenting these things before that happens because he's been diving on it since then, and you know, it just it's old. It happens. Um, the one on the bottom, St. Louis Bay wreck. Kelly found that one. We uh, we actually he goes uh, he enjoys uh, diving in St. Louis Bay on his own sometimes. Well, with a buddy. And, and sometimes at insane times of the year. Yeah, within November or in April when it's really cold. Um, and he came upon this wreck. Now we did sonar this wreck with the old sonar, but it's a blip. It we would not have recognized it as a wreck if Kelly hadn't found it. And he's got a a, an, a device that he's invented called Nav Dive that he actually can mark. He can navigate underwater. Uh, that his GPS is on the surface he's, on his. He's floor. towing. He's towing a diver down flag that has a little aerial. And he can to swim it. around and and he can put his track up onto Google Earth when he's done. So it's like, but he's under he's underwater with the Nav Dive, and he found this and he marked where it was. Our new sonar, our new unit does pick this wreck up and it's really obvious. I was looking at some, oh wait, there should be easy. So better, better equipment we can pick her up. Just zebra mussels galore. It's a, it's a clinker built wine glass stern, just like this one. So, uh, why, and more wine glass stern yeah, wrecks. Christmas Lake was <sighs> right full of them. This. Christmas Lake has wine glass stern. Now the reason, it's a fleet. It's a, it's a, a flotilla of wine glass sterns because Christmas Lake had um, the Radisson Inn as a uh, resort, and before the Radisson, it was called Glen Lake, 
and Morris in a couple different names before the Radisson company took over the, the resort. So of course they had a fleet. This is not their fleet. This is the Chapman house fleet again. Chapman had a lot of pictures and uh, but same kind of boats, same kind of like wine glass sterns. Some have seats, some don't. But all of these are wine glass sterns in a various state of preservation or not pres mm -hmm. preserve that great some of them. But these are just wonderful some of them are like th clustered in threes. Um, we have three near each other. You can swim from one to the other. And Christmas Lake has such good visibility. Yeah. You can see them. Normally we couldn't see 10 feet away, but we can, this is 30, 30 feet of visibility yeah, off the top. That's really, just, really refreshing not having to yeah. do line searches. Fantastic. <laughs> so just in general, here's all of the, some of the wine glass stern wrecks uh, in Christmas Lake. And here's some more. Yep. Um, these ones are better preserved, obviously. On um, the top one, it actually was made by, here's a, the, a ca the casing on the bow, the bow casing, casting. Bow casting has uh, Alexandria Boatworks, Alexandria, Minnesota. So we know who built this one, and she's right here. On the top center. Yeah, right? more preserved in the bow than the stern. Um, on her side a little bit, on her starboard side. But because it's so, the visibility is so good, we can get the whole wreck in one picture, and that's just fantastic for us. So, we, I'm going to do some more research. They had a, a group of, of boats, of fishing boats, they call Ladies of the Lake, even different sizes. It's, a, it's you know, like the Larson All American had a group of different sizes. Lady of the Lake uh, does too, so I think she's one of those. And then this, this other one, um, just probably, fantastic. Probably the best preserved of the whole lot. With that, with that wine glass stern sticking yeah. out like that. Just fantastic. I mean, it just, you're, you can see the skeg, you can see the whole yeah. thing. It's just great. She's not so great on the top, but or like her gunnels are gone a little bit, but still just a fantastic yeah. wreck. And you can see really good, pretty good sonar images. Um, and this one's, yeah, 50 feet of water, uh, roughly, the, this one. This one, more like 30, I yeah. think. Yeah, it's much it's shallower. Much but shallower. you see the visibility difference isn't that much at all. It's a spring-fed lake, so it gets nice and clear water. Fortunately, it does have zebra mussels. Yeah, that's the oh, one well. problem we're not happy with. Now, this is just generic small wrecks because we don't have enough of them left or they're buried. Um, see her up in the water column there a little bit. Don't know what the end's like because you stuck your hand down in there. You couldn't I tell. I had it. to take a probe because it's yeah. buried more than three feet below the surface. It's a pretty body. big boat and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. And with probe, I'd say it was probably close to three and a half, four feet to, to actually reach uh, the transom. And it's thinking, we're theorizing that the reason it's, it's sitting like that is it had something uh, heavy like a motor still attached to it. But mm -hmm. uh, I could not, uh, probing along the transom, I did not hit a motor or anything that sounded metallic. Anyway, so so. They, if they sank it on purpose, there'd be rocks back there. Probably rocks. But yeah. I, it, Couldn't it's feel so them, deep though. that, you know, it was just. We'd have to rocks, excavate. Yeah. And our, we have a phase one license uh, for our, you know, our underwater archaeology license, or just archaeology license. We do the underwater part. Um, if we want to do phase two, phase three, that's a whole different thing, uh, and it's site specific. Um, but we could move this, the silt out of that and still be within our phase one remit, and we might go back and do that sometime. But we want to make sure we don't, we might make her unstable. If we take too much silt out, she may fall forward and, may, and actually may snap. We're, we won't do that. So... We, we try not to do anything that, it, you know, it'd be nice to know what her stern looks like, but it's fine if we don't know that too. We don't, you know, we'll be, we'll be okay not knowing. Um, and up here, this little wreck, mostly it, in, it's from Maxwell Bay. Her sonar picture looks much better than the wreck does. Yeah. And the sonar picture, hey, look at this great boat. And you get down there and it's yes. just this zebra ridden, yeah. fragmented little wreck. And the one on the right side here, that's also uh, Christmas Lake. And it's mostly buried. We couldn't tell a whole lot about her. She'd be safe for, we could uncover her sometime, maybe even next year, you know, get the silt moving a little bit and get, answer some questions mm -hmm. about what she actually looks like. Oh, one of our favorites. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the one on the uh, upper left there. Ah, fantastic wreck. Very obviously a home built. And but look at that rake on that, yeah, on that bow. Just very in, unique shape. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, and she's got a nice bow roller. Um, so she's got some some bot 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 things on her some that hard, help her. Yeah. Some hardware, Standard yeah. Hardware. But she's just a just that sharp 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 bow just makes her looks just the rake. It's very dramatic when it's on the bottom of the lake. Um, we don't see that very often. Um, it's more we always see these rounded curves and stuff, and that's why probably a home build. It's easier to build that sharp than it is to build round. The one on the top right, that's Lake, Lake Minnetonka again, not much left of her, just the bottom hull, which is 
fine with us. We can see how she's built a lot of times just from that. But she's very slight yeah. tumble home at the stern. Yeah, so. probably prob going to a wine glass that's not there anymore. Yeah, well, yeah. don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Um, and this little Crystal Bay rowboat wreck, you, she's just holding her own. I mean, she's disintegrating, but you know, holes all over her, but her gunnel's there. She's sitting up. She's, you know, she's not bad shape. Look at that. The sonar picture looks like she's all completely intact. Um, her stern isn't doing so great. And actually her you know, port side quarter has yeah, kind of gone away. But yeah, a lot of the, the hull planking is uh, still hanging in there yeah, as really. a boat shape, though. Just fantastic. And really, you know, lots and lots and lots of uh uh, you know, floors, frames, futtocks, you know, the whole deal. Just amazing. Still, still surviving. Nope. Okay. Um, Slatwood Upward Rack gets its own page because she's fantastic and we can see her. This is Prior Lake compared to what that other, you know, the other places we've seen wrecks in Prior Lake. This is fantastic. This is an, actually a very small, uh, almost totally enclosed uh, bay. Man, it's uh, very of clear. Lake. And, it's you know, got to be a spring maybe nearby we don't be. it has to be it, for this to be that clear um and she's her, you can see her transom came off and that's uh, a knee a knee sticking straight up that would have been on the yeah floor. reinforcing yeah. knee so they, boats that uh were designed for power boats uh usually had those yeah you mean yeah the, the right the we, sure yeah, yeah. just strength well it has a motor board too yep. yeah yep. To, put, to, bring, to put on there so it'd be strong enough to have a motor um but she's pretty heavily built i mean you know it's, this is a nice strong boat um and why she's on the bottom that she's yeah. probably beat up and didn't need her anymore so they sunk her it's so. hard to tell in the, in the site plan but that little kind of l-shaped object is actually a uh, casting that's used to hold a mushroom anchor at the bow right that's right in yeah. the bot in the in the hold and just, there's a couple bottles there whether those were part of the site probably not those got dropped in there this could have been a fishing spot too i mean you know yeah, fish like yeah. wrecks so someone probably put a, had this as a fishing spot and they dropped some bottles in there but they're part Any of the wreck site. And reels lying around too. yeah there are that's yeah. right down off the way there are some there are some fishing poles and then we have a couple of plywood wrecks. Um, we haven't found that many of them, but here's a couple. Yep. The um, one on the left there, on the lower left, that picture was taken from just. I took that from the surface. From the surface. Yeah, it's around. actually a mosaic. That's two pictures I put together. I was just floating above while uh, Josh, one of our volunteers, and Chris were were swimming around down there with scuba. But I was just floating around the top. It's only 12 feet, yeah. and I was just used. I just with. I just had one of our cameras and was just videoing them very slowly. And I luckily got that nice, it was that, that's how good the visibility was before the um, weeds grew too high. Type. But yeah, the bow is missing. This, yeah. this, it, there might be parts of it way low, maybe at the, where the water line would have been, but we'd have to dig. And we, this has got roots. I mean, this is lots and lots of yeah. weeds. If we pull too many roots out, we'll, we might disturb the wreck and too much. Speaking so. of weeds, the uh, one on the right there, <laughs> that was another one we found because we went out really early in the year before the weeds had a mm -hmm. chance to grow in. Yep. And uh, we've been, you know, we'd scanned the there area previously and uh, didn't find it. Um, but, She's right at the, at but, the, we call it the squidge line, which yeah. is where the weeds stop and the, and the bottoms and the dry, dry bottom starts. Yeah. But, and I did find her on our old sonar, the oldest sonar footage we have, but right at the weed line, and it's it's a she's a blip. It was it, yeah, hard to tell because of all the weeds. Yeah, but and that's pretty obvious. Just boom, it's a wreck. Yeah, I was surprised because we were we were scanning. I went, oh, oh, didn't expect that because we've been over that area before yeah. with our sonar and didn't see her. Has her license or has her registration number there and all that. Um, she AP is actually. 1959 1960 number because 59 was the first year we registered but it, it's right on the cusp of Q, pq uh is when the numbers stopped that one particular year so and she's pretty cool she she must p a q yeah a, yeah a q and a p it's yeah. they're kind of yeah we're not sure if it's because different places sold the right. numbers one place might have sold all the p's and one side sold all the q's and mm. you know and then they moved on to the next yeah. letter so, so it's just approximately yeah annoying, it's 59 or it's 58 59 that, that these boats were on the if water. it was a b that's 59 yeah. for sure so anyway okay wooden upward wreck okay this is medicine lake and this is a this wreck looks bigger than it is it looks huge because it's very beamy i call it the beamy wreck and it's beamy because part of the transom has fallen. The quarters have loosened up and yeah. fallen. But she's just a big old boat. Her seats are out. Her last registration is 1966, believe it or not. She has a number and she has a sticker and it's 1966. So, but this was probably built in the 30s or 40s. This yeah. is this is an older boat that saw a lot of life um, and worked until 1966. 
work, and, work to death. Yeah, and she's just a gorgeous, big, big, beamy boat with a nice keel. And just one of those things you just, you're surprised to see like something like this on the bottom of Medicine Lake. Really a, just a fantastic boat with wonderful thin futtocks and frames and floors. Boy. A couple more we're surprised yeah. to find. Yeah, this, especially the first one. Yeah, the one on the left, the hydroplane. Uh, with Number one. Number yeah. one there. Uh, that, Has wings. It's very narrow, and it's also got these little wings on uh, both port and starboard quarters there. You can kind of see in the plan view drawing. Um, oh, no. Yeah, but it's a, it's never came across something like that before. And that's why she was part of our unusual, unusual sites <laughs> yeah. talk from last week, because we, the way she's built too, it's weird. It's, and she was canvas. She had canvas yeah, covered, canvas, not wood. And, uh, so very narrow, very long. Yeah. You know, built for speed. Fantastic little thing. But the the other hydroplane, I don't have any photos of her because she's in nine feet of water, very but, shallow, but, but horrible vis. Yeah. That part of the lake is not known for its visibility. And we've got some photos from our video that we've done screen caps of, but it's not worth it. It's, it's yeah. not worth even bothering because you, you can't tell what it is unless you're diving on it. Mm -hmm. we, and I we dove on her and felt around a couple of times. It's just basically feeling around. You might have a good picture of the cinder block that's in the middle of yeah. it. And there's some spark plugs. Yeah. <laughs> so, but she's a but, fit. Yeah, you can tell on the transom yeah. how it kind of curves down like a, like a, one of those uh, fast boats. So this is yeah. definitely a hydroplane from the, the third, 20s, 30s, 40s. And there's there's pictures out there. If you just Google hydroplane, you'll see these little wooden hydroplanes. Remember we were, we were um, for when we were on Prior Lake earlier this year, a guy zipped by in a hydroplane. Mm -hmm. Some guy had a hydroplane that he was driving around, just a little tiny thing. Thank goodness, no way. If, if you're gonna, you might get swamped easily if you're not careful with one of these, because I can see him going down. The not, motorized ice yeah, boat. Maybe technically not a boat, but uh, still very interesting, and that's something we'd find. It is too. It's an ice boat. Oh, it's a boat. boat. It's a boat. Mm -hmm. and, it's a boat. Um, it's so, but other scuba divers have looked at this thing for years and they called it a trailer. Yeah. You look around, oh yeah, we saw that trailer in Wazetta Bay. It's not a trailer. It's, it's you, we took one look at it and said, well, that's yeah. an ice boat. <laughs> I think it's more of a tractor configuration ice boat rather than the pusher type, but we yeah. included the picture of the pusher just to kind of get in that. Yeah, you see idea. the pusher there and the Pops trolley. And Pops trolley is kind of well known with people who you do this sort of thing because it's got a Harley Davidson motor. Um, and a lot of times we, in studying these things, um, and Charles Lindbergh built one and zipped it around up in Alexandria somewhere or close to Little Falls. Um, what's interesting is they use, the guys would have Harley Davidson motorcycles uh, during the summer and then during the winter they take that, the motors off and put them in ice boats and zip them around and kill themselves a lot yeah. of times. These would go so fast. I mean, you could zip across Lake Minnetonka in a couple of minutes, you know, with these things. I mean, because yeah, ice boat with with sails zipped across from Excelsior to Wyzetta in what four minutes? I think it was, was a. Like, they're fast. Uh, yeah, it was very four fast. minutes zoom. So um, these things are fast with motors, especially if you have sails can do four minutes. Imagine what a motor can do. So this one doesn't have its motor. It's obviously you know dumped. Yeah, the, I mean, just 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 discarded. Yeah, the bottom picture, I, I believe, uh, you can kind of make out the gas tank underneath uh, yeah. all that, and that's where I guess the driver sat too. And so. you see the skid, obviously, the two three skids yeah. are there, but uh, yeah. that's about it. Oh, utility wrecks! I love this little guy up here. This one, um, it reminds us of a boat that's uh, being curated at the Minnesota Historical Society built at the in the Indian trading post up at Lake Mille Lacs. This is like a just a smaller version yeah. of that one, just barely, you know, a few feet small. Yeah, it's, it's actually in better sort of. condition than the one at uh, MNHS. It is. Yep, uh, it's, it doesn't have a broken back. Well, you know? well yeah. Oh. The uh, MNHS boat has a nice split on the yeah. port, port side midships. Yeah, so this one, it's just great. We cleared off the zebra mussels and you can see the, the foredeck is a piece of plywood. It's, it's not planked, it's a piece of plywood. And then the, the rest of the boat is, planked and it's gorgeous and probably sunk. It sunk before 1959, we know that. Probably sunk before 1959. I one of the items used to weigh it down was actually a, uh, one of the uh, uh, brake mounts yeah. from uh, either a Model T or a Model A. Because yeah, there's piles of rocks and pieces of metal yeah. to sink it. A so center spindle on yeah. the front. Sunk wheel. on purpose, mm -hmm. obviously, and there's no registration number, so. We know her age approximately. And this, we just dove on this yesterday. At least our volunteers did. Chris and I didn't, didn't dive yesterday, but we got some more footage of what we call the skeleton wreck because her sides have fallen off. Yeah. And we actually have found the article. We found the article a few years back, actually, about two guys in a boat that sunk. 
in Lake Minnetonka. And I just made the connection over the last winter and went, wait a minute, that's the wreck we found. I, you know, this wreck is actually known to other scuba divers. You know, we're not the ones that were on this first and we don't really care. Uh, we're the ones where we obviously are documenting it though. And um, so we know when this sank, 1953 in June. And one man died, he did, he did drown and it took a day or so for them to find his body. Basically they described the, ac the accident, which, you know, they didn't hit me, they might've hit something. That's what they're, they're surmising. And the authorities are thinking they ran into something, but they can't say what. The boat literally just stopped and started sinking. So the motor died and the motor died probably from water getting underneath oh, yeah. it, you know, and just water just rushed in. And before um, they basically, it was this odd, I, there was no more boat below them. They're only in 16 feet of water, but one of the land couldn't swim. And it's pretty cold in June without a wetsuit for sure. So he, he didn't make it, but yeah. it's a great little wreck. We, it, you can see how things are built when the sides fall off like that. It's plywood. Um, you can see the other bits and pieces, which is, is kind of neat for us. And she's going to get a site number this year. That's why we're, we went back to her. This one has a story. We wish we could really find out what it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it, it's it's you can see here. Um, it's um, uh, tow rope for its for for uh, water skiing is completely deployed. It goes on for yards and yards and yards. We swam. Both of us have swam to this with yeah. our, with our when, volunteer when you, mark. When you get to the bow, you'll see that yeah. it's bashed in. And I, I've uh, had my head stuck in there, yeah. and it's just. And the stem post is pushed back, turned sideways, and rotated upwards. So it's. Just, and there's some fish that live in there. Yeah. It's kind of funny. There's a fish, you know, just kind of bugging. But the whole, the whole starboard and uh, port bow, although the starboard side does have an M, so the M N for yeah. registration number. And this picture of yeah, Chris, he the, found it. Yeah, yeah. I, I found this uh, uh, piece of debris lying just next to the wreck. Picked it up to see if there was anything on it and found that it had the letter L and you kind of make out it's an the letter, AL. letter A on one mm -hmm. side. So I had Mark photograph it and I put it back exactly how I found it. Yep. And that's uh, important. But we don't know what the other with the four letters. I don't think we have the numbers on this at all. Even shadows. No. I don't it, it, we no. so we don't have the letters, but A L is a nineteen fifty nine number. So this boat was built prior to nineteen fifty nine and sank prior to nineteen seventy two, I guess, because we don't think she had any um uh, validation stickers on her and validation stickers were actually used uh, began being used in 1962 so she probably sank between 15 or you know to 62 somewhere so um but she's just a wonderful got tumble home and she's well built although she might be a home build but is built very well she's got the thin slat wood her engines obviously still on there she was in an accident her her uh light mast is still up yeah were people water skiing in the dark we don't know uh, but it's a great little wreck, and we're always asking anybody if they can tell us what, uh, if this was uh, a, a Chris Craft or a Century or a, we don't think it's any of those. We don't know um, if anyone, or Higgins, um, someone mm -hmm. could tell us. We'd love to know. Yeah. And this is a correct craft. <laughs> yeah, had name, had uh, step pads with the name on it and everything. Yeah, and it's got its key right here and a float. Yeah, yeah a little red key fob floating in the. In the and why she sank, we have no idea. Um, She's a gorgeous, we think, well, late 1940s correct craft, not 48, we think. Um, her registration number AP it is that, B, see, right on that cusp, you know, PQ-ish. We don't, pro it's 1959 or 1960, but how the age of the boat? Probably 59, because this is a 1940s boat. Problem is, that number, yeah, 1489 AP, mm -hmm. um, I went to our, D our DNR contact, um, we have two current contacts these days, and that number is linked to a 14-foot Lund fishing boat. So whoever owned this boat, when they sank it, not on, this is not on purpose. This is an accident. We don't know what happened because key's still there, engine's still there, the whole bit. Um, they, they got another boat and they put the old number on it from their old boat and just transferred it. And back, there's no computers, you know, and keep track of that sort of thing. So we don't know the backstory of this. She obviously sank prior to 1972 because the records that are linked to that number appear attached to a LUN. So these are just, you know, we kind of go with that. So she sank before 72, probably in the 60s sometime. And she's fantastic. She's a great run, just a great utility. 
and we don't know why she's sank and she's just sitting she's in 50 some feet of water it's puzzling this you can see on the upper left picture how much silt is built up on the floor deck there that it's almost like someone dumped a big pile of silt on her maybe somebody did from some the, after some dredging yeah. we don't know so yeah why she's so buried it's a good question um but visibility is not bad this is 50 feet it's dark but water clarity is not too bad if you don't that, kick it up too badly lake, yeah. yeah it's that's not bad so this is your correct, your correct craft utility, just fantastic. Oh, and for people who don't know, correct craft, uh, they began in 1926, and right, they're still in business, known as Ski Nautique. It's the same company. So, oh, Chris this Craft. Is, this is another one where we found our only wooden Chris Craft that we found. So yeah, yeah, and we're able to actually get something of a backstory to it. Yeah. Uh, located this wreck, and uh, found that. Uh, Looked up in the uh, at the uh, White Bear Lake Historical Society and found uh, pictures uh, that looked similar to. What yeah, they actually, had. the the curator there, the executive director, she got these photos sent to her from some people in Illinois who used to live here, and she had them and said, she figured I found your boat, I found your boat. Yeah, yeah. she she helped us a lot. Yep. And so what you see, why why or a White Bear Yacht Club? It was their judge's boat. Yeah, and yeah. we were able to find remnants of that. Uh, those letters on the stomach on the transom yep you can see it's hard to see them yeah. in photos but they're there and number nine we found an old postcard of the number eight that used to be a judge's boat this is number nine and then they had alignment after this which was number 10 so yeah. they kept track that way so this was used uh, as their judge's boat it had a what the guy on the bow in the historic photo there is doing he's uh firing he's about to fire a starter's cannon there's a starter's cannon i love it on the, and there's there's it's kind of goofy stuff on the bow here for that and what's crazy about this uh, boat is we we got turned on to some people um, on who lived in one White Bear Lake by by the Historical Society and we went and talked to him and chatted they actually called the man that sank the boat because they knew they knew the story about this boat and the person who saw it sank at Wander Main Anonymous he basically took off the motor and then sank the boat and yeah. he didn't want it he just wanted yeah, to get the, the, guy, motor. the guy that we were initially talking to about this and called the other guy yeah. uh, said that uh, you know Oh, it was in such bad shape that even he didn't want to, yeah, try, no. to try to restore it. <laughs> no, so yeah. the guy that uh, they entrusted it to to dispose of it just... They didn't want to know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah just it, and he just took the engine out and uh, sank the rest. And he thought he was going to get in trouble because he sank the boat. It's like this happened in 1960. So, no. and actually, if he didn't do it, we wouldn't have the boat. So I'm perfectly okay with it. He took the motor off, which yeah. is very, you know, pieces of wood and some glass on the bottom of the lake are just fine. They're not hurting anything. And it's a great wreck. If the, the visibility is horrible most of the time, though, if you get there in the spring, it's not so bad. This century has a story, too, because we originally thought she was a Chris Craft, and we were wrong because the Century Boat Building Club people, they have a big forum on the internet and it's kind of moderated or ran by, run by a guy named Miklos and he and his brother and his father, his father founded a rent restoration company. They specialize in restoring centuries. And so he, the century you see there, that white one that's actually floating, they restored that. And that's what uh, model this one is. And they, he looked right away, oh, that's a century such, and he told us all about it, which is just great. And we get, we get prof you know, professionals to tell us that sort of thing. So she's just a great little wreck in about 52 feet of water. And don't know why she sank. Oh, um, um, but in very good shape. Great shape. And she doesn't have a, never had a number, uh, a registration number. So she sank prior to 1959. That's about all we can say. Except, you know, she's a great, great wreck and uh, it's a good dive. Not too bad of visibility if you have yeah, lots of yeah, lights. He, yeah, yeah Nicholas, do we still, you're, he, Nicholas thought it was uh, 1948. Yeah, 48 Resorter. Yeah. It's pro we're just calling it utility because we can't, we can't confirm it's a Resorter, but it probably is a Resorter just yeah. for model name. Yeah. Oh, I love this one. <laughs> just a great little boat, 28 feet of water. Look at that visibility when you're, when you're lucky on a good day. Get the whole wreck in there. And she did not sink on purpose. She's got her engine in there. Her, her, her doghouse is all destroyed, but the yeah. engine is there. Um, the windshield yeah. from age and maybe I suspect fishermen have probably snagged on it. Yeah, um, or on the, in the sinking yeah, process, the, who knows? Wrecking it's actually action. an earlier style windshield, uh, not like the wraparound windshield we saw in the uh, century there. That's right. So it's- uh, an Angular. Old, angu yeah. yeah, more flat pl uh, pl plates of glass. 
Yeah, and you see she does have a registration number, but she did sink before prior to 1962. She does have a black validation sticker shaped like Minnesota. Well, and those uh, shaped like Minnesota, they, they're square now. So that also is a dating technique we use. And that number, um, because it, she sank before 72, it does not appear in the records of the DNR, but we can say she sank probably 62 because there's her, her uh, black sticker, uh, 61 or 62, because there's a two year uh, validation. Now there's three year validations. Got the name Correct Craft on the side in, in nice letters. Um, the step pads don't say anything, which is odd. Sometimes they'd say Correct Craft, but these ones don't. But this is an Aqua Skier Deluxe. It just, it's a perfect 1953 Aqua Skier Deluxe. It's got the right paint job, just a nice white paint job. And again, we don't know why she sank. Um, her her my, la, mast light is out, not up, but out, probably came down. Maybe it was in the dark and you know someone ran into her. We don't know, but she's just a great little rack on the bottle of the lake. And she's got an Iva light uh, with the controller for the Iva lights on her dash, all that stuff, you know, just still right yeah. there, just the way she sank. And We're not expecting to see this. <laughs> yeah, that's right, in the early 1960s. Oh. Uh, back at Christmas yeah. Lake, um, back in the 50s and 60s, there was a dive shop called Travis Diving. Yeah. And uh, where were they located? In Hopkins. Hopkins, yeah. yeah. Uh, they ran a dive shop and they apparently uh, liked to dive uh, Christmas Lake. Uh, they uh, made this little dive platform and uh, sank at least uh, two of these, uh, these two racks here. Mm -hmm. uh, the one up above is a uh, utility. It, it's a runabout. runabout yeah, yeah, it's a, it's more of a runabout because it does have a cockpit in the front. Yeah. Um, the back bit is so big, you almost could call it a utility. You yeah. can move around, but it's it's more of a runabout, really. Yeah. yeah. If you want to be technical, technical about it, yeah. Um, and you can see that pl the platform next yeah, to it. Yeah. The, we didn't get pictures of plat. Well, we got pictures. We just didn't include them of the platform because it's yeah. a platform. Yeah. I mean, they would use that for dive training. Yeah. Also, uh, then they also sank this uh, cabin cruiser that's uh, about you know 15 yards east to east of this wreck. And the cabin's gone, obviously. But when they sank it, the cabin was yeah, off. We have pictures. Had yeah. a historic photograph of it yeah. being uh, scuttled. Um, also, uh, Travis put down these. You see in the uh, lower left photo, they have these little discs that they uh, that Travis diving put in there. Those were uh, little stations to uh, navigate to and also to check. Uh, your depth. They, they had uh, They've embossed chiseled in, yeah. Their, uh, yeah. the depth um, and the name of Travis Dyke. Because yeah, we cleaned there. a couple off and it says Travis on it. Yeah. And so the, you see the visibility is just fantastic. You can see because that's scuba, that's uh, Kelly, our, our uh, one of our volunteers, uh, and Josh took the picture. So actually this is a screen caps from his video, but that's how good the visibility is. I can actually get screen caps that good just off of, of uh, video. And they're just two fantastic wrecks. And actually those are the last Two small wrecks we have. Uh, we actually are diving in Forest Lake in October <laughs> and we have what? It's, <laughs> cold. it's cold. Yes, it's cold. But in Forest Lake we know we have at least seven wrecks because um, it's obvious from their from their uh, signatures, their wrecks. We knew one of them's fiberglass because some some other scuba divers have already seen a couple, one, at least one of these wrecks. It, it is fiberglass. The other wrecks we have found probably wood or steel. We'll, we'll find out. A couple of cars and some other things. But anyway, we're starting that in October. But of course, Diver Dawn flag, respect to Diver Dawn flag, watch out for your baby northerns. They do bite. And there's our, we our uh, website and we do our Twitter a little bit and we have Facebook. Any questions? Uh, if you want to type a question, uh, Tom, go ahead. Um, Dave. And Dave, you too, if you uh, want to type a question. I'm going to um, escape this out so I can control my mouse better. So if we, yeah, if you have any questions or anything. How many boat building companies? Oh, geez. <laughs> Don't know how many boat building companies. Not any clue. There's so many. Thanks again. Okay, looking forward to it. Yep, see you, next, see you later you, next Tom. week, Tom. Uh, Dave, uh, we don't know. There's so many. Um, a lot of them are kind of mom and pop organizations, too. You know, I do have, I have um, digitized pages and pages and pages of the manufacturers, uh, atlases, the kind of, or uh, gazetteers of sorts, from the Minnesota Historical Society, and I've even looked in phone books and stuff. So I've got those. And if you count for any given year, it depends what you consider a boat builder, because they're considering people that build motors, boat builders. Uh, carpenters can also build boats and stuff. But I mean, just for example, Lake Minnetonka, even in the 1870s, 80s, 90s, even back then, they, there were five, six boat builders just on Lake Minnetonka. 
Lake Mille Lacs um, had Vivant, which uh, and then that that became Hugo's, and, and then there the, was the Indian Boat Indian Boat Company. Plus, there's another there's another one just in Wacan. Um, oh, yeah. In St. Paul, Dingle, uh, and actually Garwood started his career here because Garwood was, he, he wasn't born here, but he lived in Duluth and he actually worked for Dingle in St. Paul for several years. And he had uh, one of his uh, offices here on, on University Avenue in St. Paul. So Garwood even built uh, boats here. Because um, Lund, Alumacraft, uh, Alexandria, Alumacraft. Parker's Prairie Boat Works. Oh, There's a, Larson, of course, one of the big, the biggest, the Larson All-American, the most popular runabout ever across the world, had sold more runabout fiberglass runabouts, Larson yeah. All-American. Short answer, a lot. <laughs> yeah, and these are just the ones we'd come across, like, on the bottom of the lake, too. Mm -hmm. um, Crestliner, we actually use a Crestliner. That's the boat we use, at Anomaly 51, our research boat's a Crestliner. Um, I mean, I could just keep, there's so many in Duluth, the Pearsons. Um, uh, there's the Minneapolis Steel Boat Company. Uh, so what year are you talking about? <laughs> we can name 15 or 20. So don't know. Dozens and dozens and dozens, hundreds. Thanks. For, you too. Bye, Dave. Um, next week, we're talking about big boats, including ones up in the, in the Mississippi River. So hopefully you'll join us in. Bye. Thank you. Okay.